The second item of business at this, of this meeting is to consider the recommendation of the Board of Directors to amend the company's restated Certificate of Incorporation. The proposed amendment would add a provision to the restated Certificate of Incorporation authorizing the Board of Directors to issue up to 50 million shares of a new Class B common stock, with each Class B share having economic rights equivalent to 1 30th of a share of the current common stock and with 1 200th of the vote, and to redesignate the company's current common stock as Class A common stock, and to make each share of Class A common stock convertible into 30 shares of the new Class B stock at the option of the holder. I think uh, before we get into uh, moving that motion, I, I think that this would be a good time to have a uh, discussion and take your questions regarding the issuance of the Class B. And I should give you a little background. I think many of you know the background on this, but over the years, we've, uh, we've had probably half a dozen people one time or another propose that uh, uh, the creation of an all Berkshire investment company or unit trust, in other words, an entity that would hold nothing but Berkshire stock and then would parcel out its own shares in smaller denomination pieces uh, to the public. And we have generally discouraged that because we felt that there was considerable potential for abuse in such an arrangement. And uh, the, our discouragement has been successful up until uh, last fall when uh, there was one, pro or there were two proposals that went as far as submission to the SEC for clearance that involved uh, unit trusts, and these unit trusts would have owned nothing but Berkshire shares and then been sold to uh, the public in small denominations, probably with a minimum investment of around $1,000 or so. And holders of those trusts uh, would have bought into an entity that had a defined life, but that had uh, considerable in the way of costs and some tax consequences that they might not anticipate when they came in. And uh, Charlie and I were worried that a combination of uh, Berkshire's past record, which cannot be repeated, uh, and uh, high sales commissions and a low denomination and a lot of publicity about Berkshire and myself, which as you've seen this morning, we attempt to discourage. Um, <laughs> the, the, um, that the, uh, a great many people would end up buying uh, these unit trusts holdings without any idea really of what they were buying and with unreal unrealistic expectations uh, as to the future and that that would in turn uh, create a considerable demand because these unit trusts would go out and buy Berkshire shares. That would create a considerable demand uh, against a fixed supply, much of which is almost unavailable because people have a low tax basis and are reluctant to sell, and I hope they're reluctant to sell for other reasons. Um, and that the very action of the creation of these and that push on the demand would might very well create some uh, speculative spurt in the stock, which in turn would induce uh, people who, uh, who had been approached about the trust to feel they were missing even more of a good thing by rushing in. It, uh, rising prices in certain kinds of markets create their own kind of demand. It's not a sustained demand, and it's a demand that uh, the reversal of which uh, later on when people become disillusioned can cause a lot of problems. But but that potential was there uh, with with uh, with the flood of of buyers with unrealistic expectations, high commissions, and 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 a fixed supply. So we attempted to to dissuade um, both of the promoters. One uh, one backed away and then came out a few months later with something that was a combination of Berkshire and and some other securities, which were at least thought to be in our portfolio. And we started hearing from people uh, that it was clear had no understanding of, of, of uh, what they were buying or the costs involved or the potential tax implications or anything of the sort. So at that time we faced, uh, we had to make a decision, we had to make it rather quickly as to what would be uh, the best solution uh, to this problem that in turn wouldn't create the same sort of thing that. Uh, that uh, we felt had potential harm uh, when uh, being done by these promoters. Uh, obviously, we considered 
a split of the stock, uh, but we were worried that a split would send out signals to all kinds of people who, who uh, want to believe in things that may not be too believable uh, about future performance and that they would look at it as, a, as a, some grand chance to buy in at a lower price. Of course, it wouldn't really be a lower price in relation to value, but it would be a lower denomination. And that, again, against a fixed supply, might very well have created the same kind of problem, maybe even a greater problem, uh, than uh, would occur with the unit trust. So uh, we came upon the idea of uh, the Class B shares which would create a supply that would match the demand for, in effect, a split shares, and that would be offered in a way that did not uh, create special inducements or, or to create false, false, false inducements to people thinking of buying. And uh, one of the things we did was we stuck a commission on it, on the uh, issuance of the Class B shares that. Uh, uh, was about as low as any I've ever seen uh, in, in many years in Wall Street because we did not want salespeople to have a great inducement we, uh, to go out and, 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 and sell the shares. We wanted anyone that was interested to read the prospectus and think about it and, and make their own decisions. And, and uh, we did another thing which is uh, uh, quite counter to the normal commercial approach, which is that uh, we said we would issue as many shares as people wanted to buy. And, you know, you do much better in this world if you're selling something to, to say only one to a customer and you have to get in early or you have to know somebody in order to, to get shares. And that's, many new issues are sold that way. And it's very effective. I mean, it's you know, like those old stories about in Russia where there'd be lines and people would get in them without knowing what they were going to buy when they got to the front of the line. And, and that, that's a very effective selling tool. And it's one that uh, Wall Street is not unfamiliar with. Um, but uh, we, uh, we, we decided that... Uh, that uh, to reduce any of that feeling that you have to get in early or only the big guy's going to get it or something of the sort, that we would announce uh, loud and clearly that uh, we, would, uh, we would have shares available for everyone that wanted. So there was no reason to assume that, that uh, it couldn't be a hot stock in effect. And we've done various other things. So I th our hope is that the Class B shareholders that we attract are of the same quality as the people in this room, that they have an investment attitude that, uh, where they feel they are buying into part of a business, that they expect to stay with it for the indefinite future, maybe the rest of their lives, and they do not think of it as a little piece of paper that may be hot because it's a new issue or something of the sort. And uh, uh, it, lets, uh, it lets the people who are happy with the present shares stay in exactly the same position, which is what I'm going to do, what Charlie will do. We have made the B very slightly disadvantageous in two respects to the A. It has a, it has a lower vote and it, ha it will not participate in the uh, shareholder contributions programs. There were reasons for both of those, but in addition to the, t in the, the, the explicit reasons, there also is the desire that the B not be made uh, fully, it, it's just a slight bit inferior, but it's not fully as attractive as the A because uh, we did not want to do anything that pushed everybody into converting into the B. Uh, if that started in a big way, the B would then enjoy the better market and it would create its own dynamic where it, it made sense for everybody uh, to do it. So we have, we have left it so there is no reason for you, uh, if you own the A, to convert to the B unless you wish to sell or give away some portion of your holding that would be less than a full uh, a share, and uh, it will be convenient for that reason, but uh, beyond that, there should be no incentive. If the B should trade slightly above one thirtieth of the price of the A, there will be arbitrage activity that will, will, uh, will keep, keep that from being anything other than a, a negligible amount. It, of course, could trade uh, well below one thirtieth because the B is not convertible into the A. Um, Charlie, would you like to add anything before we start taking questions on this? And, and no. I, encur I, I encourage everyone to ask. Yeah. 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 Charlie, as you will note during the meeting, does not get paid by the word. At, uh, <laughs> but we, uh, I encourage every, anyone to ask any question. There are no bad questions about this. I mean, it, it, uh, 
last year we uh, we talked about a uh, about a preferred issue and and people had very valid questions uh, uh, I might take those two points of difference between the a and B uh, just to uh, start with uh, uh, on the shareholder designated contributions program which was twelve dollars a share last year uh, in addition to wanting the the A to have a very small edge over the B, which would be a reason for not having the B participate. It also would get very impractical in terms of of uh, taking twelve dollars and dividing it by thirty and 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 soliciting uh, uh, the names of charities and to, to designate contributions. And it, we we can handle the present program fairly efficiently, but we would not want to be sending out checks for a dollar or two, and uh, it would it would get very inefficient. So. Uh, we have told prospective B holders that that's not going to happen, uh, and uh, so they're fully informed coming in. In connection with the vote, the the issuance of the the B uh, does create more votes outstanding. So, absent any change in the situation, uh, uh, through the issuance of shares, which we're, we are not particularly eager to issue, uh, the vote, uh, my vote will be will be uh, diluted somewhat. Uh, by this, and and I hadn't, frankly, I had no desire to uh, to create uh, uh, a lot more shares, which would 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 dilute uh, 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 the vote of the Buffett family. Uh, it will be diluted somewhat by this action because we will have we will have all the present votes outstanding plus some votes from the B. If there is a lot of conversion to the B, it is true that that that, that our holding will go up uh, percentage wise, but I. I see no reason why people really should convert, so I don't think that's likely. I think in the end it'll stay very much the same, and and and, and as I mentioned earlier, we want we want there to be a slight disadvantage to the B. In all other respects, uh, we will treat uh, the B just as the A. I, we have a problem with numbers at this annual meeting. We're going to have to do something next year, which and we haven't figured it out yet either. Uh, but the uh, uh, suggestion was made by someone that uh, maybe the uh, the B would uh, get second-class seating or something. We're not going to have any of that. But uh, 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 from 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 this point forward, with the point of, with the exception of the two things we put in the prospectus, uh, the B shares will be treated in every way uh, as equivalent uh, to A. Uh, uh, so with that, and with Charlie's reluctance to elaborate.